Hi, my name is Rob McLaughlin, and I have some conflict resolution tips for you. This tip is one that can be used daily in any situation. And it is one of those types of things that once you become aware of it, you uh, begin to see it. You're, you're much more conscious of it, and you can uh, actually practice and play with it in any number of situations. So uh, what we're talking about is kind of how you listen for understanding. And a part of what typically happens, especially in conflict, but really in our daily lives in general, is we are very superficial in the way we communicate and the way we uh, express ourselves with other people. And in conflict resolution uh, in particular, uh, there's a need for a deeper level of understanding, a, a deepening, a going below the surface to uh, recognize and gain a new perspective on the importance and meaning of what's being said at the surface. So on, on this uh, illustration, you'll notice there's a horizontal blue line. You can think of that line as a watermark. So part of what we're gonna be talking about is what's above the water on the surface easily seen, and what we have to kind of dive down deeper below the water to uncover, uh, to see, which oftentimes is in some ways the most beautiful part. Um, another metaphor for this work could be an iceberg where uh, we're familiar with that the iceberg above the surface of the water is visible. We can see it clearly, we can un understand it, uh, but it's really the very smallest part of the iceberg. Below the water line is where the largest part, the mass of that iceberg is. And in fact, in certain ways, the part of the iceberg that can uh, potentially be very damaging if you're not careful. So uh, what does this all mean? When there is a conflict, what typically happens is the people involved will try to communicate and problem solve at a very superficial level. And that surface level includes blame, complained about behaviors, assumptions, and positions. So let's just take a moment for each one of these. A blame, he always does this. It's his fault. She's responsible. Uh, a complaint about behavior. Jim is always late to work. Jim never gets his work done on time. Uh, assumption. Everyone knows that it's this way. Everyone knows that we start promptly at eight o'clock. A position. A position is the perceived resolution. It's the perceived outcome. So the position is what the person believes will fix or resolve the issue. My position is this needs to happen. This is the way it needs to be. So the important element of this is these things are useful. You should listen to them and take them in because they become helpful at this next stage to do some exploring to kind of peel the layers of the onion back and begin to understand where they're coming from, what's underneath the surface of these individual elements of blame, complaint about behaviors, assumptions, and positions. They're important to the individual or they wouldn't be saying it. It's just that the way they're saying it in the superficial way being used is not instructive to the process. So let's go below the surface. Beneath each one of those is some sort of an underlying interest or need. They're informed by values and beliefs. There could be cultural elements that are involved. And it's at this deeper level below the surface that we need to have the conversation. And it is here that we can begin to elicit the important aspects so that we can begin to move towards problem solving. You can't problem solve at the top level. You can only problem solve once you've explored the underlying uh, importance. Let me give a brief example that might be helpful. Several years ago, I observed in a large retailer at the men's cologne counter, 
that was around Christmas time, um, there was a mother and a daughter, and they had made a purchase, and they were going to get a free gift because they had made a purchase. And the free gift was a large pillar candle. And the mother and daughter had to make a decision whether they wanted a silver candle or a gold candle. And they weren't making much progress. It was going back and forth. The mother would say, I want silver. The daughter would say, I want gold. And so finally, the daughter asked the, uh, the mother, why do, you, why do you want the silver candle? And the mom said, because I want to use this in the living room. And the gold candle looks brassy. And because it looks brassy, it's going to clash and not go with what we have in that, uh, in that room. It's going to, to, to conflict. It's not going to go well with the other things in there. So it's very simple, but what it's suggesting is that instead of being back and forth about the position, I want gold, I want silver, it only took a few seconds of conversation to go below the surface and talk about the interest of wanting this to go in a specific room in terms of the decor that resolved the issue. So play with this. There are examples of this on the radio, on television, in social media, at work. Play with this. Let yourself begin to hear in conversations that people have. I want you to begin to listen for the superficial content. I want you to begin to Hear people talk about positions and their assumptions and blame and complain about behavior. I want you to be able to label it and identify it. And then I want you to give some thought. Now, you may not necessarily hear it, but if you do, that's great. Listen for the underlying interest or need or value or belief. And if you don't hear it directly, then do a little mind experiment. You might ask yourself, well, how does this affect that person? What might their, you know, how, how might their interest or needs be expressed through this element, through this position? You know, what value or belief might be associated with that assumption? And begin to do some thought experiments and play with this content. And the more you do that, the more you work with it, the easier it will become uh, for you. Um, and we'll talk more about this as it leads into later on how to have an open conversation, how to actually communicate, not just listen, how do you begin to communicate in conflict settings. Before you can do the communicate, you've got to know how to listen. So work with this and then this will pick up again in another segment.